Hey kids, today we're going to be looking at picture graphs and interpreting and constructing some picture graphs for ourselves. But first of all, let's have a look at this page here. These are a whole pile of tables, data tables to be exact. Why are tables useful for displaying information? Let's take a look at this one here. This one is the number of Smarties in a packet of Smarties with the colours green, orange, blue, pink, yellow, red, purple, brown all down the sides telling us how many Smarties are in a pack of the different colours. This one here, let's have a look, is telling us what sports do you play and how many people play soccer? 106. How many people do swimming? 82. And all different tables that show us data information to help us not gain more knowledge on a topic. Tables also help us sort and organize data and it makes it easier to understand what it is that we're trying to gather data on. Let's have a look at this table here that shows the number of books read by a group of friends during a reading competition. What does the top row of the table show here? It shows how many weeks there were in the competition. And what do the rows below show? Well, they show each student's name and how many books each of them read. Now, a table is a great place to get information and to be able to ask questions about your information. Like, in which week did Sophia read three books? In which week was the greatest number of books read? And who read the fewest books? Who read the most books? These are the type of questions that you can pose when you've got a table of information and you can answer these questions from it. First of all, I'm going to use the data in the table to find the total number of books read by each student. So I'm going to start with Mason here and I'm going to add up the total amount of books that Mason had. So I'm going to say 4 plus 4 is 8, and 2 more makes 10, and 3 and 2 make 5, so 10 plus 5 is 15. So I'll just write 15 here for Mason. Okay, next I'm going to do Sophia. Now, Sophia, what have we got? 2, 4, 6, and 3 and 1 is 4. 6 and 4 is rainbow facts, so that's 10. 10 for Sophia. And then I'm going to do Eli. So we've got double three is six, and another three is nine. Nine for Eli. And the last person, Loyla, has, let's see, five plus two and three make five. So five and five is ten. Four and three is seven, so she has seventeen. So from my adding up already, I can already see that Mason here, no not Mason, let me check, Loyla read the most books in the competition, followed by Mason, then Sophia and then Eli. Now that I have the total number of books read by each student, I'm going to use this information to complete a picture graph. But first of all, my picture graph needs a title, so I'm going to give it a title now. On my key over here, I have that one book is equal to one blue block. So that's what's going to make my picture for my picture graph, is every blue block that I place on my graph equals one book. Okay, so Mason is our first reader, and he read 15 books. So I'm going to put into my picture graph 15 little pictures to represent books that Mason read. I'm up to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and and fifteen. Now Sophia, she had ten books, so I have to count in ten little pictures that represent one book each for Sophia. Ten for Sophia. Now I need to do 9 for Eli, 9 for Eli, and now I need to do 17 for Loyla. So let's start Loyla's. That's going to take me a while, isn't it? Because she got the most. 
and 17 for Loyla. So there I have my picture graph. Now I can use my picture graph to answer any questions that I like. Let's have a think of the answers to these. How many more books did Mason read than Eli? So Mason's here and Eli's down here. So how many more did Mason read than Eli? One, two, three, four, five, six more books than Eli. How about if I ask the question, how many more books did Loyla read than Sophia? Hmm, so Sophia finishes here and Loyla finishes here. So Loyla read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more books than Sophia did. This time I have a picture graph that shows the total number of books read by all the students each week. So this one is slightly different. My title is Books Read Weekly and I have my weeks down this side this time and each B represents one book and it's the total number of books read in the week. So if we go up here and look at week one, Mason read two, Sophia read one, Eli read zero and Loyla read three. So that is a total of two, three, six books read for week one. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, that's right. And week two is here and it had four and four is eight and three more is 11, 12, 13, 14 books read. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes, that's right. And then it goes along with the same for week three, week four, and week five. So here's my two graphs. But how is this graph different to the first graph that we did? Well, it, this graph shows a weekly result instead of this graph showing an individual's total, res, total result. So here we have a weekly, res, weekly result for how many books were read and here we have the individual children's results. So which picture graph would be most suitable if you were interested in the student who read the most books? So if you were interested in finding out which student read the most books, which graph would be better for you? It would be this one, wouldn't it? Because this tells you the individual student results. So which picture graph would be most suitable if you were interested in comparing the number of hours that the students spent reading each book? Well, then you would go to this one to see how many books were read each week. So two different picture graphs showing similar results in terms of the competition of how many books were read but slightly different in their information. Now it's time to practice making your own picture graph. Follow the learning wave for the instructions. Have fun!